All right, so a couple weeks ago, we talked about the rise in COVID cases and very well-received video. First of all, shout out to everyone who caught the video here on the YouTube channel or listened to it on a podcast. But unfortunately, a lot of the comments that I got was very similar to what it was like in 2021, 2022. I said, you know what? We may have to do a quick refresher because if I see comments like, oh, it's it's back again or the vaccines didn't work. Oh, here comes another flu and you know, whatever little hair that I still have left, I was going to pull out. So I think this episode we are going to be talking about why COVID and the flu is not the same thing. I don't like that I have to do a whole video on it, but I understand because of the amount of similar comments pointing to that fact. I want to make sure we draw the line. So I think we should first start out in saying COVID is not the flu. I think we should first start out right there. Hopefully that's enough, but let's say it's not. So let's continue on from a transmission standpoint, right? Let's start with similarities, right? Because I think that's a little bit easier for us to break down here in the Lunch Learn community. All right, let's say how are they similar, right? Because I think if we understand how they're similar, maybe we can understand why people are tripping and assuming that they're the same thing. And then we're going to end with why they are completely different and why we need to like stop the press is on any discussion that tries to put COVID in the same bucket as the flu. So let's talk about how you get it. We both know COVID and the flu are both respiratory diseases, which means essentially airborne, which means as we talk, our respiratory droplets are the essentially passageway of getting COVID from one person to the other. The same thing with the flu. If you have the flu, guess how you can pass it? And you should understand why it's similar because in the hospital setting, maybe you may not know, hopefully you don't know it. In the hospital setting, if you have diagnosed with the flu or you're diagnosed with COVID, you're put under what we call call respiratory precautions. To give you an idea, it says like, hey, you know what? When you walk in there, wear a mask, right? You might want to stand back a little bit. We were doing this for the flu. So I don't want people to be like, oh, you guys just started doing it. No, no, no. Before COVID, we did the same precautions for if you just came in with the flu, regardless of your severity. It was all kind of this respiratory drive because we understand that just the act of talking, because obviously if you're a physician, healthcare worker, you're going to have to talk to your patient. More importantly, your patient is going to have to talk back to you. So that a ability to transfer the COVID or the flu was kind of the same, right? So yes, they are both respiratory diseases passed by air droplets, right? That can linger in the air and then land on someone else or land on the surface. Uh, make sure we get that land on the surface and then pass it on. So that's, that's one thing. Another similarity, the symptoms. I'll just be very general with COVID because COVID has a few caveats that the flu does not, but let's just talk about similarities for now. Because they are respiratory diseases, where do you expect your symptoms to come from? Of course, the respiratory issues, right? So you're going to have some short of breath. You're going to have some cough. You're going to have some sore throat. You're going to have, you know, congestion. Like you're going to have things that, especially from a introductory perspective, as far as like how these viruses are moving around. And that's probably another thing. They're both viruses, right? But you know, we'll go next. The way that these things are kind of transferred and transferred to someone else, when they start showing up and causing problems, they cause the headaches, the fatigue, the body aches. But more importantly, they cause the shortness of breath. They cause the cough. They cause these things when they're entering the lungs and causing problems because that's where they do their damage in the lungs. Now, COVID does damage elsewhere. Like I said, we'll talk about differences later. But when we're in the pathway of when we're driving down the bus of similarities, we have to say, yep, your respiratory system will take a hit. You get some body aches, you get some pain, you get some weakness. If you ever talk to someone who's had COVID, they will tell you they felt like they ran 10 marathons. Like that is how fatigued and tired they were just with their body fighting with the COVID. And if you talk to someone who's had the flu, they'll tell you like, yeah, I feel like I just ran like, you know, a hundred yard dash trying to, you know, get away from like a rabid dog or something right? Like they will tell you that they are tired, they're weak, and their body pain is irking, right? So symptoms, again, can kind of go down this similar path. Now, again, we'll talk about the differences. We'll talk about the detour in a little bit later, but like just so we can kind of understand from a similarity standpoint, they do have similar symptoms. What are some complications associated with COVID and the flu? Well, I think first and foremost, right, you're going to have some respiratory issues, right? It's going to hit the respiratory drive first, right? So you're going to have the pneumonia, you're going to have the shortness of breath. Typically what happens in the hospital setting when you have significant fevers and chills and body aches and you're just so ran down, you end up in the hospital setting because of it. So with the COVID and the flu, you can have pneumonia, respiratory failure. I want to say a cascade of issues that may occur following the respiratory failure, which in layman's terms, respiratory failure essentially means that you may end up 
on the vent, meaning that you may end up needing supplemental oxygen, meaning that your normal way of doing things, whether it's well, I'm just normal or I have maybe some oxygen where you're going to need more. That's what we consider respiratory failure just for the standpoint. And from a prevention perspective, and let's go down to similarities. We say mask up. We say wash hands. We say social distance. And I think this is the part of revisionist history that I don't like, especially now because people are kind of Monday morning quarterbacking. People act like we talked about masking and social distancing and washing your hands and sanitizing only when COVID came around. And it's because a lot of y'all did not pay attention to us when we talked about the flu. And this is what I tell people all the time, especially depending on how long you've been following Dr. Barry Pierre. I've been talking about the flu for a hot minute, a long time. I've been talking about getting vaccinated for the flu for a long time. Why? Because I know the problems that can occur when the flu is not controlled. I know the issues that end up when you get hospitalized because the flu is not controlled. And this is pre-COVID. Again, like, don't take my word for it. Go on my YouTube page, you know, search Dr. Barry Pierre in flu. I got plenty of videos. I actually got a few blog posts on it as well. So I don't want people to think that we just started talking about respiratory diseases or we started talking about these preventative measures now. No, I was telling you to social distance, wash your hands, wear a mask at that time as well. Because before 2020, you know what used to happen with one of our employees in the hospital if they did not have a flu shot? You know what we used to make them do? What do you think about it? We used to make them wear masks. So imagine before 2020, if you did not have the flu shot, during flu season, we would make people wear masks, the employees, not the patients, even though we wish we could, you know, we just threw them in that droplet precaution area. But if you were an employee in a hospital setting and you noticed before 2020, we made you wear the mask. You were like, oh, you don't have your flu shot. You got to wear a mask. Sorry. Now, of course, when you fast forward now and you think about it, it don't really happen like that. And in fact, I don't think hospitals are even checking for the flu records in that sense to say, oh, this person doesn't have a mask. But what they typically will do, I'm just speaking for the hospitals that I worked at. I don't know how it works across the country. So don't jump in my comments saying, oh, but in my hospital, we don't do that. Congratulations. But in the hospitals that I've worked at, what they would do is they would actually tag your badge a certain way to let us know whether you had the flu shot or not. Like we knew, hey, this person did not get the flu shot. And why? Because we knew that not only was the flu contagious, but the flu could be dead detrimental to the hospital staff. Now, mind you, the hospital wasn't doing it for the greater good. They were doing it because they knew that, all right, if four of our nurses get sick, guess what? That's going to cost us a lot of money. If two of our doctors get sick and now they can't do surgeries, that's going to cost us a lot of money. So for financial reasons, they wanted to make sure that their employees stayed healthy just for financial reasons. I'll be honest. Maybe there were some altruistic reasons with it, but I can assure you financial reasons, they wanted to make sure that their employees stayed healthy. So for that point, they would make us wear a mask, right? So the similarities, right? Like, like transmission, symptoms, complications, preventative measures, how we protect ourselves from it. That's where the COVID and flu is similar. Now, this is where we have to jump off the bus. This is where we have to make the detour. This is where someone goes left, someone goes right. Because if I hear COVID and flu being the same thing again, ah, I'm going to scream, right? But And again, maybe I, I gave myself too much credit, right? Because again, obviously, you know, not everyone hears what I say or hears what, you know, other professionals say. So maybe the people who we told this to two, three years ago, maybe they got the word, but maybe the new people who may have found us are like, hold on, I mean, not nah, COVID and flu is the same thing, right? COVID and flu is the same thing. It's not. So let's talk about some differences. Let's go into the differences associated with COVID and the flu. So we both know that they're viruses. Yes. But what causes it? Right. And we talk about this a lot. The coronavirus causes COVID. Coronavirus causes COVID. Influenza virus causes the flu. Right. So already we're dealing with two different types of viruses already. Right. So if you didn't think there was any differences already, we're dealing with two different types of viruses. So what do you think the likelihood of those two different types of viruses having two different approaches and finality as far as how they present and how they cause problems, you know, with us? Right. What do you think about it? Hopefully you don't think it's a zero percent chance that there'll be some differences. Hopefully you think, all right, I'm going to listen to Dr. Barry. Maybe there's a couple percentage points difference. All right, let's talk about that. Contagiousness and duration. I like this, right? This is a good bullet point that I like to have. And this is one of the issues that I was screaming from the rooftops when we talked about COVID. COVID has always been more transmissible than the flu. It's the reason why you can get a million. Let me stress this, repeat this. If you listen to our podcast, it's coming back again. It's not a glip. This is the reason why you can have a million cases in one week with COVID. Whereas the flu, 
on a bad year may average 520,000 annually. Like just so we can kind of get an idea. You can get a million cases in one week with COVID. Flu cases may average out about half a million, right? A little bit above that for the whole year. Just so we can get that. In fact, I'll round up for you. Let's say flu cases can get up to a million a year, a year. And in one week you can get 1 million cases of COVID. That was especially during the Omicron phase. Actually, like, especially with some of these numbers that they're starting to report now, COVID cases are up, right? If you did not get that gist from my previous video, watch the previous video. If you didn't get the gist, COVID cases are up now. You can get a million cases in one week with COVID. You're not getting a million cases in one week with the flu. It just doesn't happen. And why is that? The rate of transmission is almost 10 to 100 times more in COVID than it is the flu. So I can have the flu. Oh, I gave this scenario during one of my lives. I was talking about Noah Lyles and his COVID diagnosis. I said, hey, if I get diagnosed with the flu on a Monday, I may get symptomatic from it, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, like it's pretty quick. And because it's pretty quick, the clock that I'm no longer like a contagion, right, starts pretty quickly. But if I get hit with COVID on a Monday, I may not experience any symptoms for like five days. But unfortunately, between Monday and Friday, I'm a contagion from Monday to Friday. And I'm giving it to not one, not two. I may give it up to eight people before I start having some symptoms. <laughs> Think about that. I may give it to eight people before I start developing those symptoms. Those eight people may also give it to eight more people each before they start developing symptoms. And I can keep on going, but hopefully I do not. So when you hear this COVID and flu, the same thing, that right there should stop you. When you hear someone say that, or when you see someone type that on one of my comments, you say, ah, tell me the time when the flu had a million cases in one week. They will not be able to tell you because this never happened. Complete stop. Severity. This is the number that we kind of touted, especially during the time frame. The rate of deaths, and I want to make sure I get this number correctly. The rate of deaths associated with COVID is one to two percent. And you know what used to get me so mad during when the peak of the pandemic? People were okay with one to two percent. People were like, oh, one to two percent, that's nothing. Like we should be okay with that. No, especially when millions of people are getting it. So no, I'm not gonna be okay with one to 2% if I know millions of people can get it, especially when I compare that the flu can get from a you know rate of contagion and everything else from a fatality perspective, 0.1%. So if you have the flu, you have a 0.1% chance of dying from the flu. If you have COVID, you have a 2% chance of dying from COVID. Which odds do you want? I will pause and wait for you to answer. 2% chance of dying or 0.1% chance of dying? You can answer it in the comments, please. Like, if you're listening to the podcast, hit my YouTube channel, drop it in the comments on this video. Like, would you prefer... The 2% chance of dying or the 0.1% chance of dying. Now, obviously, I want it as close to zero as possible. I want it close to zero. So like any number that's closer to zero, I'm going to go towards. Any number that's further away from zero, I'm probably going to run away from, right? So you have a fatality rate of 1% to 2% with COVID and only 0.1% with the flu. And more and more people get COVID. Again, remember, you can get a million a week. So if more and more people get COVID and you have a 2% chance of dying from that, guess what? a lot more people are going to die and a lot more people did die. A lot more people did die from COVID from the flu. In fact, more people died from COVID in the three to four year stretch that we kind of, you know, that we start counting COVID than the amount of people who have died since the initiation of the flu. In a four year stretch, let me repeat myself, more people have died from COVID than the amount of people who have died from the flu since the flu first began. 1800s, y'all. So don't, 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 please don't make yourself look silly and say stuff like the COVID and the flu are the same thing. Like nothing supports that. Nothing supports it, especially when I start talking numbers. When I start talking hospitalizations, let's say hospitalizations wise for COVID, hospitalizations and at one point reach 20,000 per day. Guys, I hope by the end of this video, you'll never allow someone to say COVID and the flu are the same thing. I hope so. I mean, we'll see. I hope so. They'll probably still be hard headed and won't believe you, but I hope at one point you'll be like, nah, nah, nah. I listened to Dr. Barry. The numbers he was saying, nah, that don't make no sense. I don't want to hear COVID and the flu being in the same ballpark because they're not. At one point we had 20,000 hospitalizations per day, per 
stay from COVID. As far as the flu worldwide, let's think about this, about 140,000 to 180,000 per year. Per year, I mean, we could do the math, which means it would take about three weeks to eclipse the number of cases of hospitalizations for COVID, then it would take the whole year for the flu. Let's do the math again, 20,000 per day. It would take about three weeks for the amount of cases of COVID to surpass the amount of total cases of the flu we get in a year. It's not comical, it's sad. When you hear people say the COVID and the flu are the same thing, they are not being truthful or they're just not knowledgeable. It's either or. <laughs> it's either or. Either they're not truthful or they're just not knowledgeable. I don't know which one it is. I'm hoping that they're just not knowledgeable and that four years later, they're not still kicking these lies. But I mean, who am I? And we talked about this again, this the rate of death, flu deaths, about 650,000 each year. In the United States, about 52,000 deaths annually. COVID alone, think about these numbers. COVID alone here in the United States killed 1.1 million people. Over 1.1 million people died from COVID in one year. One year. So again, what are we talking about here, y'all? What are we talking about? Let's do the summation. I know you guys don't like hearing me long talk, right? You guys like when I get in and out of here. I love it too, right? Is the COVID and flu the same thing? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Are there some similarities? Yes, there's some similarities with how they're transmitted. Not the rate, but how they're transmitted. There's some similarities with some of the symptoms you may develop when it first hits you. There's some similarities there. There's some similarities when we talk about some of the complications that can occur if you get COVID or flu. There's some similarities there. There's some similarities when we talk about how do we prevent it. There's some similarities there as well, right? In terms of, you know, wearing a mask, social distancing, washing your hands with a hand sanitizer. There's some similarities there. But after that, the detour, the detour occurs. I go left, you are right, right? Hospitalizations, the rates of transmissions, deaths, like the types of viruses that cause it, some of the complications, especially from an end organ perspective, COVID can affect the brain, COVID can affect the kidneys, COVID obviously affects the lungs, it can affect the liver. There's so many other organs that can be affected directly from COVID that does not occur with the flu. The detour is there, right? We are not in the same zip code, we're not in the same state, we're not even in the same time zone when we're talking about the differences between COVID and the flu. Don't let anyone again tell you that COVID and the flu are the same thing and that we should act as if COVID and the flu are the same thing. I don't care what the Olympics people say. Uh, if you got my Noah Lies, Noah Lies, Noah Lyles episode, um, I talked about, you know, how the Olympics is treating COVID and the flu like they're the same thing. I don't care what they say. It's not. It's just not. The numbers don't show it. The stats don't show it. Common sense doesn't show it. It's just not. So do not continue to be uninformed when the information is just right here for you right? You can watch this video. You can listen to this on my podcast episode. You can do a Google search. You can do some things that say, all right, is the COVID and the flu the same thing? And you'll get your answers pretty quick. I just don't want you guys being in anyone else's comments, saying anything silly. I'm hoping to help you avoid that further embarrassment that may occur when you say COVID and the flu are the same thing. I'm here truly Dr. Barry Pierre, and I'm gonna see you guys next week.